enough for such a warm welcome and i also want to welcome all of you guys on our today's talk and today we will talk about api management api management and some trade-offs problems issues as solutions and general trends in that area to kick start let me introduce you a situation, a startup. Rapidly growing startup, they innovate fast. They have quite diverse portfolio of services and each service is exposed its function functionality through APIs. As the company grow, so did the number of APIs. APIs are used to deliver fast, reliable and innovate services to its customers. However, as the number of APIs grows and increase, so did the complexity. The development teams start to spend more and more time managing these APIs instead of focusing on new functionality and instead of focusing on creating new features. APIs become harder to monitor harder to secure and harder to scale. The lack of centralization in API management led to inconsistencies in how APIs are designed and how APIs are used. What caused confusion and slowed down the development cycles. The situation reached the tipping point when a major client faced an issue due to unannounced change in APIs. The incident resulted in significant downtime for the client and a loss of reputation and lost in a loss of trust in Innovate Fast. Probably time to time, we can read about such situation. We will read about such situations in news, in lead campaign, whatever. It's quite common situation nowadays. On another spectrum, we can have a bit different story. A pillar of financial industry for decades, the big bank. It has a lot of internal and external services. And each of these APIs been developed through over the years. However, as bank has grown and technology has evolved, and technology evolves all the time, managing these APIs become a significant challenge. The bank's APIs were developed by different teams at different times, leading to lack of standardization. The inconsistencies in API design has resulted in confusion for developers and again, slower development cycle. Furthermore, it becomes difficult for developers to discover and understand functionality of existing API. And also it becomes hard to developers to understand how to expose newly created API. Security has also become a concern. With each team implementing its own security measures, there is a lack of consistent security policies. And that inconsistency led to a potential security vulnerabilities. The situation escalated when an, an announced change in one of the APIs caused a major service disruption for a high profile client. This incident resulted in significant downtime, financial loss and reputation damage. About a year ago, one of our customers, I can't say that they have a similar station, but very the same station, but it was very similar station uh, in terms of uh, how significant a small vulnerability can be for end users. As you saw from these examples, issues has made may vary from organizational context. From one side, we can have rapidly growing agile organizations like startups. And from another spectrum, we can have 
some very mature and big organizations with a lot of processes and operations. Nevertheless, we can structure these general problems with API, APIs from the perspective of API management. Unannounced changes, lack of centralization, inconsistencies, difficulty in monitoring, security. That is only a subset of problems our clients can issue regarding an API, their API usage. And today I'd like to discuss with you some approaches, how we can help here. To kick, off, to kick off a discussion, first of all, we need to understand a business, a business of APIs. Why APIs exist? What they give us from the technical perspective? What they provide to our clients from the business perspective? The most dummy explanation on what is API is to uh, give an example of electric socket. Maybe that example was relevant 20, 30 years ago. For today's day, it is no longer a valid, valid perspective. API is not about dummy and point, dummy socket. It is about business. It is about value streams, faster innovations, agility, improved customer experience, and improved developers experience as well. Again, maybe the most crucial part for our, for our clients and organization is revenue streams. But not, it is not only limited to what I have said. And we can try to generalize these perspectives in few words. Business of APIs is to enable access enable access to data, enable access to services, or enable access to innovations. Talking about business and APIs, it's very hard not to mention digital transformation and uh, how what is the role of APIs in digital transformation. How we can understand what is a digital transformation? Digital transformation is the process of using digital technologies to create new or to, or to modify existing processes or to modify culture or to modify and or enhance customer experience with a goal to meet changing business and market requirements. With digital transformation, we should consider some trends, what we see right now, what people want to achieve, what they are interested in, where we can help uh, our customers. And as you see, all these trends in digital transformation highly coupled to API modernization. You can't achieve any transformation without API modernization. Therefore, API play a crucial role in digital transformation. APIs enable seamless integration of various systems and services. Mm, do not forget that API modernization involves updating legacy APIs. They exist, they will be exist, they existed, they exist and they will be existing uh, all the time. And it's not a case that you will always rewrite legacy system to a greenfield. You will need to update systems. You will need to adjust exist services, exist APIs to meet modern standards and requirements and improve their performance, security, or easy of use. One of trends, uh, one of trends on our landscape is business right now 
more technical, technically aware than it was before. And business people understand that business survival correlates to architecture ev evolution. Architecture should provide business with, with proper architectural governance to survive in highly paced, almost continuously changing world. In such a context, architecture cannot be perceived anymore as something static. It is not about to provide static artifacts, snapshots of something, napkin designs, or UML diagrams, or whatever. In today's context, architecture is about guidance and decisions, and governance on these decisions. As requirements change often, architecture should adopt to these changes, but even more, architecture should predict trends. Architects should evaluate how current decision will influence a business on a some horizon. And maybe that uh, will be a first time I would like to ask our audience to give me some hints. What do you think about architecture trade-offs? How it work for, for you? Do you have do you see here any challenges? For example, if we're talking about the landscape for architecture, architecture is not done in vacuum. Architecture done in organization. Therefore, when we work for a big organization, we at least should be aware of a Conway law. Most of you, I bet, know that law very well, and I won't repeat it here, but I want to highlight that the problems in communication on the client side, inside of the organization, will lead to security vulnerabilities, will lead to too many tools used for similar functionalities. It will lead to inconsistencies in automation, whatever type of automation, and it will lead to not clear boundaries and ownership between teams. Complexity, latency and security, they over a part of a trade-off. Except of three of these, we can also we should also think of total cost of ownership. We have provided a solution. We did an assessment and recommend something. What will be the total cost of ownership for that solution? Should we choose open open source public uh, framework? to tackle with a problem? Or should we search for enterprise level subscription? These are decisions which will influence a trade-off for organization in general. I want to give you a few seconds to recap what you have heard and think about a few questions. During the time, maybe someone wish to share experience in API management and uh, with our community. As was mentioned, API management is widely represented topic nowadays. API management, API gateways, API discovery, developer portals, API marketplace, it's all about API management. What can bring us to a conclusion that we have a lot of reference use cases around us about how APIs are used to do a business. 
one of examples of uh, good API management is Twitter. Twitter, and, and specifically, I want to highlight here Twitter API versioning. In 2012, Twitter launched a new version of its API, 1.1. And it com that version com contains the, that uh, days some breaking changes compared to the previous one. And Twitter decided not to duplicate all ver old version same day with the release new version, but they allowed a transition period during which both versions were supported for their end users. Another example is Netflix. They are, they are known for API gateway, probably most used company. They are famous on how they use API Gateway, and they contribute a lot of to API Gateways. Netflix handles billions of requests daily, and they use API Gateways to road requests, handle authentication and authorization, provide functionalities like rate limiting and caching. Stripe is one of examples of a company who treat their APIs as a product. What does it mean? It means that they have a dedicated team who works on their API, APIs, ensuring it is well-designed, well-documented, and easy to use. With a very short review of what we have on the market, let's jump Let's jump to something more specific. API gateways. Before we dive into the question what, how API gateways can help us in API management, we need to answer a question. What is an API? What will be the definition for API? Can someone try to help me to bring that definition on a table. But of course, it's application programming interface, that's all. Okay, programming interface, it's about API, and uh, let's combine it with the API gateway. When we combine these two words, API gateway, API and a gateway. So we combine several APIs and try to manage it in in one point like this. Yeah, basically you basically write. It is about to combine several concepts under the one umbrella. Let's try to recap it. API gateway is a solution, or you can think of it as a pattern to solve or well, to solve some, some set of use cases that can be implemented via different types of proxies. Once more, API gateway is a pattern to solve known use cases via different types of proxies. API gateway is nothing fancy or extremely new. It is, we can think of it as something new only from the perspective of emerging pattern to solve common problems. If we would try to explain what is an API gateway to non-technical people, I can recommend you an abstraction of receptionist in a large office building. It is the first point of contact for anyone trying to access services in the building. The receptionist checks who you are and what you need and directs you to the right place. As you see on that drawing, API Gateway is a first line of contact. API Gateway, it will be 
something at the edge where all the incoming requests will arrive to be later distributed to other services inside your organization. Any questions about API Gateway concept? Okay, it's cool. Now I have a few questions to you. It's trivial. What we what you see on the screen, it's trivial. It's quite easy to understand why we need it. It's quite easy to understand the benefits of implementing implementing something like that. And we use it all, all the time in many places. Difficult questions, maybe not difficult, but challenging questions questions which you should think of from the architectural perspective. Where API gateway should be deployed? What will be the consequence if we will deploy it same virtual machine as our application service. We will have problems with uh, with load sh shaping and yeah we we can have all all things DDoS or something. At yeah. least performance issues, also security issues. Okay. Uh, first point was uh, we, okay. We, we name it right now three points: security issues, performance issues, and the third one. Could you please repeat? Okay. Traffic shaping, yeah, it was about traffic shaping. Let's address them. Uh, whenever we introduce something in between a client and a server, we always will have performance drop. It's inevitable. It's always will happen. Whenever you decide inject something in between in a process, it will introduce additional latency. But we, there are situations in which we will trade off that latency for something. For example, security. If we want to increase a security and we want to minimize uh, security, not, not security, but we want to minimize a radius blast of a damage, if something bad happens, like, like, a, deep, like a DOS attack, Uh, what should we do? Where we should deploy API gateway? Most popular approach will be to deploy API gateway in some gray area. Not to deploy it with your servers, but deploy it closer to the client, but still with your infrastructure. In a such situation, blast radius will be won't affect your applications. Next point is security uh, performance lost due to our introduced proxy. How we can minimize that uh, performance loss? A question here will be on a, what level of abstraction we do, for example, load balancing. In GCP, in Google, we have two possibilities. We can use either application load balancer or network load balancer, NLB. What will be the bigger difference between two of these? Network layer, they, they are acting. Yeah. So if we choose the easiest one to implement for most of developers, 
they will choose application load balancer. It is easy to understand. It is easy to configure. It is easy to work with. But it will introduce bigger latency drop. Instead, if we go down to a network layer, we missed some business functionality, business opportunities, opportunities to business functionality. We can operate on a network level, on a packages level. And here we will have not such big latency drop. And if we compare performance for LB and NLB, network load balancer will give you about 30% of a performance improvement correspond, uh, compared to application load balancer. Uh, I'm sorry, but this is a little bit simplified picture. Absolutely. We have to use load balancer at the level where we have to load balance. And if if, if my load balancing is HTTP URL based, the network load balancer will never, never help me, right? So yes. what I'm trying to say, the decision is not always because of latency and OSI model, but... Absolutely. You're absolutely right. And uh, when we choose something, we need to understand a context. And if at the beginning we see that by all the means we should use application load balancer, we start to use it and we go into production and client has more and more requests and we see that uh, latency became more crucial for the client, we should start thinking how to decrease the latency, yes? And one of approaches can be, what if we try to implement load balancing on a, on a different level? Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, in context of API management, we just move the functions of application load balancer to the API gateway, and we introduce network load balancer in front if we need to, to, to just purely balance traffic to the API gateway nodes. Is that the idea uh, you're trying to highlight, or is it something different? No, no, it's okay. I am not talking right now only about load balancer. We use load balancer here as an example of a proxy, right. which can, uh, which most, okay, probably when we talk to technical people and we say load balancer, more people understand us compared to if we uh, come and say API gateway. Yeah. Right, uh, and sorry, I'm, I'm, my, my intent is not to hijack. I'm just trying to, to emphasize that for, for API management itself is operating on on top of HTTP, as even we see on the picture. That's why it cannot probably be 100% compared to the network balancer. Yes. yes. All the functionality you have on the right, rate limiting, service discovery, protocol transformation, they all require us to be on the level seven, right? So we, we have to have application load balancing functionality uh, one way or another. Yes. Okay. I am not sure about rate limiting. Rate limiting. Well, if we want TCP rate limiting, yes, but it's not the case for API. Yes. Know. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Guys, conceptually, on a high level, do you have still some questions about API gateway role in API management? Cool. Well, let's then jump to another solution. And another solution, it's trendy solution, it's growing in a popularity solution, is usage of a service mesh. If we try, as with previous example, to explain what is a service mesh, to provide a definition of a service mesh, I don't think we will end up with something different from what we have said about API Gateway. Basically, these are very interchangeable and very common. From the definition perspective, I mean, but from the usage perspective and from the technology level perspective, they are different. Worth to note, as I said, that service mesh is growing, adoption growing solution. Uh, there are some trends 
and predictions that in some point in the future, service mesh can dominate API gateway and we will deal only with service mesh solutions because API gateway will be only a, a subset of service mesh functionality. The main difference between API gateway and the service mesh pattern or solution is a way how you deploy that solution, how you enable that solution for your applications. If compared to API Gateway, if in API Gateway we had a single entry point for many services, applications on the back end, here you will need to deploy sidecar proxy within each application. How to understand it from not technical perspective? Imagine a large organization again with various departments, big number of departments, such as marketing, sales, HR, IT. Each department has a department head. It will be service logic. And each department head has an administrative assistant, a sidecar proxy. The administrative assistant communicate with other assistants to coordinate tasks, meetings, schedules, uh, and uh, projects between departments. Once more, we have a department head, which represents a service, and we have an assistant which represents sidecar proxy. That is a general idea behind that solution, behind that pattern. And we need some control or control pad, control plane to, to manage all of this. And we need somehow to deploy it, uh, these proxies every time. And we need to keep them alive and healthy, and we need to monitor them and observe them, and, and we need to secure them. Uh, one of most used for today day uh, problems to solve uh, when service mesh I, is used is end-to-end -end encryption, zero trust uh, security approach. If you will need to provide end-to-end -end encryption between all the services in your organization, most likely, you will end up implementing, start using service mesh solution. Any questions or comments on service mesh? Okay. We have talked about API management perspective. We have another, another perspective, another dimension, not a perspective, but another dimension for these tools. Traffic management. Traffic management is about traffic control and traffic splitting. From one side, we have traffic control like rate limiting and circuit breaking. And from another side, we can have debug roads, uh, canary deployments, blue-green deployments, or A-B testing. And API Gateway or Service Mesh, they mostly concern with different types of the traffic. The main concern for API Gateway is north to south traffic, a traffic which comes from a client into your organization. And the main concern for a service mesh is east to west traffic, a traffic between your services, which shouldn't leave your organization. How we can try to understand that from real world examples? 
API gateway is a traffic control system in a big city. It manages flow of vehicles on the roads, ensure they reach their destinations efficiently and safely. Vehicles, data requests, roads, our network, and destinations, our services. Tra API Gateway is a traffic light. Service mesh. Service mesh, again, think of previous example for service mesh. Assistant. Assistance, assistant who help to resolve some cross concerns. Do you have questions about the difference between north to south and east west traffic? As was mentioned at the beginning, talking about API management and trends in digital transformations is impossible not to note about API modernization. And each of these solutions, each of these patterns, API gateway and service mesh, give us ability to modernize already exist APIs. Instead of rewriting a service to enable security on that service, we can use some proxy before in front of that service to achieve our non-functional or functional requirements. All cross concerns works here. Security, logging, observability, all that can be solved, not touching existing services. As we have uh, discussed some bright sides of API management, we always shouldn't forget about a dark side of API management and problems or challenges we can have implementing these solutions. Very easy to do problem implementing API gateway. The round trip road. From the previous example, what API gateway can be perceived as a traffic light control in a big city. Imagine that uh, at the beginning in your organization, you have only a few services. And it almost warrants that you do not need a service mesh. If you have only a few services, you do not need a service mesh. However, as number of services increase, some complexity appear, some subset of service mesh functionality often required. For example, service discovery. An easy implementation, uh, easy workaround, how to achieve service discovery, not to implement in a service mesh will be to use already deployed, already exist API gateway to route your requests. You will use already maintained official directory of all the service locations to solve your internal east-west traffic problems. If we do that, let's try to find a few downsides behind that solution. What bad, why it is bad, why it is not recommended uh, for service to communicate through organization API gateway 
if you need to have east-west traffic communication. What will be downsides? First of all, it will be a mess on the road. It will be very hard to understand which requests driven by real clients, real business users, and which requests are driven by internal uh, requirements, internal usage. Second, it will introduce additional payload on your API gateway. API gateway will need to handle more payload. Third, your traffic will need to leave a secure perimeter of your internal services. It will most likely go through the public internet to reach out a service which is deployed next Kubernetes cluster. Any questions on that anti-pattern? Great. Next one, I will start from the question. What is an ESB? Who do remember what is an ESB? It's Enterprise Service Bus, of course. Of course. For those who works more than 10 years in IT, it's of course Enterprise Service Bus. Enterprise Service Bus main purpose is to, is not to, but is directing, managing, and orchestrating business requests. That solution still used in big enterprises, but very rarely used elsewhere. It has its benefits, pros and cons, as always, but uh, microservices-based architecture, not very good fit probably for ESBs with a lot of complexities inside. API Gateway's functionality can be easily extended with plugins or modules. If you take uh, some exist solution, for example, Kong or X or Envoy Proxy, it is a common practice that you will write add-ons to these solutions. You will write some customizations on how you want to achieve security or do you want, or you want to achieve some traceability, custom version, you want to implement some filtering, some logging logic, you will write plugins. A pitfall can be that, okay, we have an entry point, we have a place we, where we already discover a payload, why not to inject a bit of business logic here? It's very easy to do. You already have abstraction, you already have something, and you simply you simply do that because it's easy to do. As soon as you do that, you will introduce additional coupling between a gateway and a service. Why it is bad? Because if before API gateway was pure of business logic, there were no business logic inside, only addressing only technical concerns, you were, you were able to redeploy API gateways as you wish, update them as you wish, change them as you need. As soon as you introduce a business logic, you have a coupling to a business services. And you will need to coordinate your releases and you will need to inform about changes and you will need to adjust to a release cycle. Any notes here? Basically, it's all about separation of concerns. Who is responsible for what?
The next anti pattern will be a never ending hierarchy. At the beginning, I have mentioned a convex law with the big organizations and how complex uh, solutions, technical solutions can be because of that influence of social, social hierarchies in, organiza in organizations. It is a mirror for that problem. Big organizations tend to work with hierarchies. It helps to segment network. It helps to segment departments. It helps to segment ownership, responsibility. My department is responsible for some subset of functionality, and I want to have own gateway for all my services. From one perspective, it sounds reasonable. We have a good segregation, but as usual, there is a trade-off, there is some additional costs. First, we already mentioned at the beginning, performance. Many hopes in a flow you will have, the worse the performance you will achieve. The previous example with ESB, where I mentioned that uh, you will need to coordinate your release cycles because of coupling on business logic. Here, you will have the same problem. To change your API gateway, you will need to coordinate these changes with upstream and downstream dependencies. Another problem will be traceability or understandability of issues. Something bad has happened and you need to trace all the logs all the flow of a request through all the API gateways. And still, it will be not clear who is responsible for that cross concern. While that approach can work for a small scale, let's not forget about the trade-offs. APIs from one side very easy to understand and we understand the drivers behind APIs. But still, we will have a lot of questions on how to do that properly, how to achieve, how to meet requirements based on some solutions we can provide. How to ensure consistent security policies. We can use API Gateway to enforce these policies. We can, as architects, we can take a responsibility to define architecture fit functions and push and enforce these functions, enforce these policies on the level of API Gateway. It will give us ability for regular updates of these requirements. It will enable for us audit and it will be easy to review these solutions. How we can handle high traffic? We already mentioned load balancing, which is a subset of functionality we can achieve with API gateways. But it is not only a solution available to handle a high, tra high traffic loads. We can use other strategies. We can use other solutions like caching, right? rate limiting. And if we are talking about common challenges, they won't disappear and you will need to ensure performance and reliability. You will need to ensure security and 
if we are talking about security, the very crucial part here will be how fast you can fix uh, you can fix security vulnerability. As soon as security breach discovered, how long it can be open? How much time you will need to fix a problem? If we are talking about big organizations and API gateways are a part of service implementation, we know that in big organizations, release process can take weeks, sometimes months. Is it suitable that after security breach discovered, we will need to wait two, three weeks before new version, a patch version will be released? Most likely not. We want security breaches be fixed as soon as possible. There are some already well-known solutions on the market for both concept, concepts, API gateways and service mesh. And do not underestimate Kubernetes. On a small scale, Kubernetes can cover both these concerns only using Kubernetes toolings. The only problem with that solution, if you will stay only with Kubernetes, is you will stay only with Kubernetes. It's a vendor locked in. Sometimes you should think about that trade-off. At the beginning, it can work, but you start. You should start thinking on how you will migrate from ingress controller, controller to Istio, for example. We didn't talk today about future trends in API management. We didn't talk about GraphQL. We didn't talk about API marketplaces or API developer portals. And we didn't talk about event-driven architecture, where we will have a bit different picture. I believe that's all from my side. Do we have any questions? Guys, maybe someone has a question. No questions, just very great review and recommendations. Thanks. Yeah, no questions, like great job. So Yes, yeah, sorry, Colin. Yeah, I'll finish already. Go ahead, please. I um, wanted to agree uh, that great presentation and great overview. Um, yeah, thank you very much for, for your presentation. Okay. In this case, from my side, uh, Maxim, uh, thanks a lot for your presentations and uh, for sharing your experience. And uh, thanks all for uh, joining us today. Uh, we hope uh, this presentation was interesting and useful for you. And uh, you will receive a feedback form shortly. Uh, please fill it out. Uh, your opinion matters for us. And uh, we will be happy uh, to see all of you next event. Uh, so have a nice day and uh, take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye, guys. Thank you. Have a nice day.